Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What is going on, everybody? Matthew Bivens here, and welcome to another episode of the Having It All podcast. Happy fall, people. It is Wednesday, October 25th, 2017, my absolute favorite month. I am a Halloween nut. Halloween is my favorite holiday. I love everything about it. Pumpkins, skeletons, spider webs, all that great stuff. And so I'm just been, I've been so jazzed for the month of October and uh, we're getting close to Halloween. So that's it. It's costume time. I got a couple costumes in mind. And so, yes. Now, Another reason why I wanted to share the date is because I'm going to be publishing, recording and publishing this episode on the same day. So it's October 25th, day I'm recording it right now, I'm speaking into the mic right now, and as soon as I'm done, I'm going to hit publish on this, this bad boy and get it out to you. Because the topic for today is something very, very juicy, very relevant, and has just recently happened. And so I thought it'd be very cool to get this thing live ASAP. Now, today's episode was inspired by a listener email. Now, I just responded to this listener email this morning. So I have not yet gotten permission from this listener to use their name, to read their email, to read my response. So I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, But I still am going to talk about the gist of of what they came to me with, you know, with their question, because I know so many of you have this sort of question and this sort of scenario. And again, I'm just, it's, it's something that I've gone through. And what I'm going to share is, is just absolutely fantastic when you're in this situation. Now, once I hear back from this listener, and you know, if they give me the okay to use their name and, and to share the full story, I'm going to record an updated version of the episode. I'll tack it on to the beginning or maybe the end. I don't know. And I'll let you hear you know, their exact scenario and I'll read my exact response. But since I just responded to, to this person a couple of hours ago, I don't know yet if they're going to be cool with it. So I'm not going to do that. Now, before I jump into the topic, um, I just want to let you know, I love listener emails. I love them. You know, a, a number of podcast excuse me, a number of episodes on the podcast have been inspired by listener emails. So if you want to reach out to me, if you want to share something that's going, been going on in your life, get some feedback. If you want to share an incredible breakthrough that you've had in your life or, or talk to me about how you've been having it all in your life or if you want to talk about a breakdown and you just want somebody's ear to listen to, email me. My personal email address, personal Gmail email address is mattcbivens at gmail.com. You can shoot me an email there, or you can go on my website, which is matthewbivens.com, and you can fill out the contact or the go to the contact page and drop me a line through there. I am accessible, and I absolutely love hearing from you. Now, here's another tangent from the tangent. A, a, a guest, or sorry, not a guest, a listener who I connected with a couple months ago happened to live in the same city as me, and he and I have struck up a friendship, and I actually went and hung out with him yesterday. He came to the fitness class that I teach. So I just, I really love taking the relationships from, you know, from the podcast, bringing them into the email virtual world, and then if possible, bringing them into the real world, because that's where I think some amazing connections can happen. So I'm all about connecting. Reach out to me. You got my contact info. Awesome. Let's move on. So today's topic is about relationships. Yes, those things that we love and they tear us apart, (laughs) you know, and it's those things that we crave so much, but then they just, I also, we pull our hair out and they make us anxious. And I mean, they're incredible. They're beautiful, you know, relationships. And I'm talking about intimate relationships, by the way, I'm talking about like boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife type of stuff, those types of relationships, partnerships, all of that, all of that beautifulness. Now, this, uh, this listener, 
situation is something that um, I've been in myself. And so, you know, the, the, the quick background on the situation is, you know, getting into a relationship because you feel drawn or attracted to a person spiritually or mentally or most oftentimes physically, and you jump into the relationship with this person, and you might have all these expectations about what the relationship might end up blossoming into, but somewhere along the line, it doesn't feel like it's going that way. And you've created an emotional dependence on this person. And now you're watching as the relationship is not moving in the direction that you want it to move, yet you're feeling an attachment, an over-attachment to that person. You're feeling dependent on them. Your emotions are hitched to that person. And so when they decide they want to be a little bit reserved, well, now your emotions get, get tossed around, right? Like, like a rag doll in the wind. Or if they want to take you up, they could take you up. If they want to bring you down, they can bring you down. See, that was my hand coming down and hitting the mic. You know, and, and so you're, you're in this relationship. Remember, you got into it because of that initial attraction. There was something that just, you know, it pulled you in on this person. You couldn't really describe it. And now you feel like you're at the whim of the relationship. You feel like you, you aren't staying true to yourself and who you know yourself to be and, who, and how you want to be treated. You know, you, won't, you don't feel like you're being honored and valued in the relationship. And now you're frustrated. And you start searching for, for courage, courage to stand up for yourself, courage to communicate to that person, maybe courage to leave the relationship. And so perhaps you muster up that courage and you're going to have that conversation or you've had that conversation and you've stepped out and now you're in a different place and you're wondering, I want to get back into a relationship, but I don't want the same thing to happen again. Or if you're still in it, you're wondering, how can I alter this? I really like this person. I, I feel like there's potential with us, but what can I do to try and get this thing back where I want it to be? You know, I, I want to put some agreements in place, but we're so far down the line that can I actually put agreements in place months into the relationship, years into the relationship? How do you do that? And so that is the, the gist of the scenario that was presented to me. And boy, it resonated. It absolutely resonated with me because I have done that. I've done that for the majority of the relationships in, in my life. Honestly, actually all of the relationships that I've stepped into, I stepped into with, with some portion of that, what I just described being the case. And it wasn't until later, it wasn't until recently with my wife, Sarah, that we started to really go back on that, on the, those things that the, our, our, the foundation you know, the foundational pieces of our relationship and look at them and strengthen them in a very intentional way, in a very direct way. And so that's what I, what I really want to get into. So we've got that scenario. And while I was describing it, you might have been nodding your head. And so, you know, the question I was presented with is, you know, Matthew, what would you do in this case? You know, how can I communicate this to this person? How can we talk about you know, expectations and agreements. Can we even do that at this stage in the relationship? And so when I hear something like that, a few things really come to mind. One of the things that, that, that pops into my mind initially is we've all heard it. And it's this, this concept of being right with yourself internally, understanding who you are, being comfortable with who you are, accepting who you are first, first and foremost, before you then step into something with someone else or before you, you look to somebody else to try to give you that acceptance and that love and that validation. So that is, I think, a, a journey and a healing and a growth process for so many of us because we aren't, we aren't taught, a lot of us aren't taught how to do that. We're told that's important. We're told, you know, you want to be whole and complete with yourself before you then connect with another person. We're told that, but in a lot of ways, we aren't taught that. At least I know I was not taught that. I was not taught how to love myself first. I was not taught how to be 
happy with myself first. I was not taught how to become whole and understand that I am whole first before seeking that in somebody else, looking for that in somebody else. So there's paradigms that we have, right? Paradigms are the way that we view the world, the lens through which we see the world. You know, there's paradigms that we have that don't necessarily line up with what we want to experience in relationships. We have a paradigm of, you know, the other person makes me happy, the other person makes me whole, the other person makes me feel secure, the other person makes me feel stable. If the other person's emotions are up, well, my emotions are up too. That's the trademark of a healthy relationship. I used to say that to myself. I convinced myself that was true, that with my girlfriend at the time, if I couldn't, didn't feel sad when she felt sad, it was because I was a bad boyfriend. I convinced myself of that. Somewhere out in the world, in society, I picked up that belief. I wore on that paradigm. So what I'm doing right now is I'm setting the stage. I'm saying that we have these paradigms that don't necessarily serve us for stepping into powerful relationships. And we hear talk and conversation of new paradigms, new healthy paradigms that will serve us. However, we're not given the tools. I know I wasn't. I was not handed a tool that said, do this thing and you will value yourself more. Do this thing and you will understand yourself more. Do this thing and you will feel like you have more purpose in your life. You will feel like you have more direction in your life. Do this thing and it's going to help you be that person that you want to be, put out that energy into the universe that you're going to then attract in your partner, in your mate. It wasn't until many, many, many years into my dating that I, that I became, that I got myself around teachings and tools that helped me to do those things. And so that's what I shared with this listener, and that's what I'm about to share with you all is to enter those relationships only once you are crystal clear on what you're playing for in life. Only when you're crystal clear on what's important to you. Only when you're crystal clear on what you want to experience, not only in your life, but in the relationship. And only when you're crystal clear on what you're willing to bring forth and what you expect the other person to bring forth in the relationship. Now, I'm talking about minimizing those unfavorable, those unwanted relationship experiences. I'm not talking about completely eliminating them because, you know, things might happen, right? But you can enter relationships in a, with, a, with a more effective paradigm. Because if you're unclear on who you are, if you're unclear on what you're about and what you want, then you absolutely run the risk of being influenced and led by other people's wants, other people's desires, and other people's goals. And what happens is that really just puts you in, in a position where you start to form a dependency on that person. You start to look to them to figure out what it is that you want. You start to look to them to figure out what it is that makes you happy. You start to look to them to figure out what it is that makes you feel loved, that makes you feel whole. And then when that person does what people do, go about their lives and you're attached to them, well, you get pulled around with them. You start to feel like a victim. You start to feel like they don't take care of you. They don't understand you. They don't listen to you. All of those things, because you entered into the relationship without that understanding of who you are, what you're about, what you want. So the tangible things, the actual tangible things that I absolutely recommend you have in place before you step into any sort of romantic relationship are a personal mission statement, your personal values listed out and prioritized, the roles that you currently play in your life and why they're important to you, goals that you're playing for in your life, and I recommend you have one of them be at least a big, hairy, audacious goal. Now, standards for the people that you want in your inner circle, these are the folks that are around you. These are your, these are your boys. These are your girls. The people that are right around you, tight. You know, they're like family to you. 
but standards for who those people are and what they're about. And then standards for the people that are on the second layer of, of, of people within your life. And then finally, the, the big one, this, has, this, this is the, really the one that, that points directly at those relationships. It's the relationship standards. The standards for that person that you are going to invite into your life to connect with, to partner up with, to share yourself intimately with. Standards for who that person is. Standards for how they show up in life. Standards for how they treat themselves, how they treat other people's. Standards for how they view life. When you have those things in order, when you have those things listed out, written down, some of them printed out, and once you've not only written them, but you've memorized them, and you've internalized them, they're in your bones, right? They're in your, they're in your guts, they're in your soul. You've internalized what your mission statement is. You've internalized those relationship standards. Then you have all of the, the, these, these beautiful tools with which to use to gauge a person that you might want to step into a relationship with. You say, all right, I'm, I have this opportunity to step into a relationship with, with person A right over here. Let me see. Let me pull out my mission statement. Will connecting with this person help me move me closer towards fulfilling my mission or move me away from it? Does this person meet my minimum requirements for my relationship standards? Or is connecting with them going to go against my relationship standards? Hmm. Let me ask this question. I know this is a podcast, so I know you're not going to be able to answer me right now. But what do you think is one of the most important, if not the most important way to love yourself, to practice self-love? It's by holding your standards. Hmm. Think about that. When you set a standard, in this case, we're talking about relationships. When you set a relationship standard and you hold it, you're telling yourself that you are worth it. You are worth holding that standard. You are worth having somebody that meets and exceeds that standard. And every time you break it, every time you break one of your standards, you're just planting that seed that you aren't worth it. That, eh, I'm not that valuable anyway, so I can go ahead and break that standard. Eh, you know, my feelings don't really matter. So let me step out of integrity. Let me just break that standard. It's okay. That's why all of this stuff, that's why the mission statement, the values, the roles, the goals, the, the inner circle and outer circle standards and the relationship standards, that's why all of that stuff together, when you rep it, when you use them, they help you practice self-love. They help you create, cultivate feelings of self-acceptance. They help you develop that inner peace. They help you create happiness and joy that comes from within, that doesn't come from without. Because once you're standing there firm and confident in who you are, clear about what it is that you want, what it is that you're playing for in life, valuing yourself, holding your standards, maintaining your standards, being clear on what your standards are, you are so equipped to step in and rock it out with somebody else. Like, that's the type of person that I want to have a relationship with. I want to have a relationship with a person who's clear on all those things. Somebody who is going to maintain their standards. Someone that says, Matthew, you know what? I love you, but you just don't hit my standard right now. I'm going to hold the space for you. And when, when you start, when you, when you pick it up, we can go there. I, now, I, I don't know why I use myself as the example of a person who doesn't hit the standard, but I'm just trying to make a point. <laughs> That's it. So this is what I said in my response to this amazing listener. Because, you know, I have been there. Man, I've been there. And with Sarah even, you know, her and I got together. I didn't have my personal mission statement. I had some values listed out. I, I didn't really have my goals written down, uh, my roles either. I had no standards for, for 
inner circle, outer circle, or relationship. So, you know, her and I got together before I really was aware of any of these tools. I wasn't really aware of these new paradigms. But once we became aware of them, we went back and we did all of these things. We created not only a personal mission statement, we, re- we created a, a relationship mission statement, right? We cr- I created my personal values. I got very clear on what my values were. I prioritized them. I described what they mean to me, why they're important. I got clear on my roles. Looked at myself as a husband, as a father, as a brother, as a son, as an entrepreneur, as a coach, as a leader, as a creator, as a lover. Described why those are all so important to me. I set goals. I set some awesome goals, some, some BHAGs, some big, hairy, audacious goals. Created standards for those people that are going to stand close to me, those people that are going to be in my periphery, and those people that I'm going to share a bed with. You can do this work after the fact. Because, you know, the, the information may not have flowed to you before you stepped into the relationship, and that's cool. But I'm just putting it out there. If you've ever wondered why some of your relationships just have not been working, if if you feel like you have a pattern of attracting certain types of people, if you feel like you've gotten into scenarios that just feel familiar, and you're like, what the heck is going on? If you're not feeling valued, if you're not feeling appreciated, if you aren't feeling loved, if you feel like your emotions are so determined by the emotional state of the person that you're sleeping with, I know what that's like. And many of those things will become more apparent to you as you go through knocking out and creating these things that I've listed here in this episode. So I could go on and on and on. I could really unpack each of these different things from personal mission statement down to relationship standards and and really just go in on all of them because they, each of them, there's a lot to them. I'm not going to do that right now. I think that would be a really awesome thing to do in perhaps a series, a series of episodes down the road. You know, what I, what I will do is I haven't heard back from this listener yet. Um, I'm going to see if, if they're going to be cool with me sharing their actual scenario, you know, sharing their email, and then I'll read my response in its entirety. A lot of it I paraphrased here today, but I'll read it in my entirety because, you know, an, another thing that I, th- I think is so beautiful about all of this is that we are all so connected. You know, like each of us absolutely has unique experiences. You know, we're all unique people. We have unique experiences in life. But the emotions that we feel, you know, those emotions are the same. That frustration that joy, that heartache, that excitement, right? Like, I know what it's like to be excited by a relationship. I know what it's like to be hurt in a relationship. I know what it's like to feel confident as hell. And I know what it's like to feel so damn scared. So we can all connect with that. And so even if you're in an an, an awesome relationship right now, you know what? Make it even awesomer. Yeah, I'm making up words over here. Make it even awesomer by coming up with some personal mission statements for yourself. Have your partner do one as well. Make a mission statement for your relationship and go out there and create some kick-ass stuff. That's what badass couples do. They get very clear, very intentional, and they go out and make some stuff happen. So, to the listener who sent me the email, I am incredibly grateful to you. Grateful that you would just share, grateful and humbled, right? That you would share this stuff with me, open up yourself a little bit to me, let me in, and that you would ask me for some feedback. Like, that's that's freaking incredible. And, you know, for all of you out there listening who have been in or are in a similar situation, I feel for you. I've been there myself. I've been there myself. And, you know, there's there's tough conversations and tough decisions to make and and all of that stuff. But, that's, I mean, you listen to podcasts like this one because you're about that. You know, you're about doing the things that might be uncomfortable, but they're necessary for your growth, for your healing, for your greatness, for your transformation. So 
I'm there with you. And to bring it back full circle, you know, this podcast is called Having It All, Abundant Loving Life. And if we go down the six F's again, which are which make up life, we've got faith, family, friends, fitness, finance, and fun. Well, when we're talking about romantic relationships, like in this episode, we're talking about people who eventually could become family, people who currently might be friends, right? We're hitting off a couple of those six F's. That's why this stuff is so important. Creating an abundant, loving life, a big part of it is being intentional, being clear, being direct. So that's all I got for you today. Again, Wednesday, October 25th. I'm super excited to publish this episode, to share it with the listener, and to hear all of your amazing feedback. If you've got feedback about this episode, you want to share it with me. Maybe you've got some, some examples of standards that you've created for yourself or, I don't know, whatever you've got, story or anything. Send me an email, mattcbibbins at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. I would love to connect. And with that, my name is Matthew Bivens, and here is to you having it all.